With the month of October finally here, we are starting our most haunted places in the world series again, just like last October. This month we will be doing four episodes, Canada and Alaska, Africa, the Middle East, and South America. Today we are talking about South America, from a cemetery where a young lady was entombed alive, to a road that has taken hundreds of lives. Before we get started with these five terrifying locations, pick up an I Believe Ghost Beanie to express your belief in the paranormal over at our store. The perfect addition for the creepy marathon month we all love. Hit those lights, sit back, and enjoy. Recoleta Cemetery, Buenos Aires, Argentina. La Recoleta Cemetery is located in Buenos Aires, and it holds the graves of some of the most influential people in Argentina, including presidents, Nobel Prize winners, and even one of Napoleon's granddaughters. But perhaps his most well-known resident is Eva Perrin, it was built in 1822 over the grounds of a disbanded monastery and was designed to be a luxurious resting place for the elite, full of intricate marble mausoleums, some created by world-famous sculptures. The cemetery houses over 6,000 bodies and it looks like the city of the dead with each section laid out in blocks, with tree-lined sidewalks meandering through the tombs, all of which are above the ground. None of the corpses are buried in earth, for fear that the marshy site would send their bodies back to the surface during periods of heavy rain. Many of the tombs are glass-fronted and visible to visitors and loved ones, who can peer inside almost every crypt. But in an eerie contrast, some are meticulously maintained, while others have been forgotten and fallen into disrepair, and are littered with insects and other debris. Despite this, the Recoleta Cemetery has been named as one of the most beautiful in the world, and every year receives thousands of visitors. However, behind its beauty, there are some chilling and haunting stories about some of its occupants, and this one in particular is especially tragic. In 1902, 19-year-old Rufina Cambaceres was found seemingly lifeless by her parents. Her death was confirmed by doctors, and her parents made arrangements for her body to be transported to the cemetery, where she would be entombed in a crypt. But the day Rufina arrived at the cemetery, a terrible storm rolled in, and a funeral was postponed until the following day. Her body was placed inside a coffin and stored in the cemetery chapel. The next morning, staff in the chapel noticed that her coffin had been displaced and had moved slightly with its lid ajar. They immediately contacted Rufina's distraught parents, who went to the chapel to view their daughter's body, fearing that grave robbers may have stolen valuable jewelry they had wanted her buried with. But they were shocked when the coffin was opened and they found Rufina's body bruised and bloody. Further inspection of the coffin revealed the wooden lid had been frantically scratched and clawed at. Their precious daughter had in fact been alive. It was discovered that she had suffered from a rare medical condition, leaving her in a comatose state, fooling doctors into believing she was dead. Rufina was finally laid to rest in a mausoleum that sports a likeness of her walking out of its door. But many believe that she is not at peace, and her bitter spirit haunts the cemetery to this day, the place where she spent her panicked and terrified final moments. Rufina is not the only ghost to supposedly haunt the cemetery. There is also the ghost of a former caretaker, David, and he worked at the cemetery for many years and longed to be laid to rest there himself. He purchased a lot and made his own funeral arrangements before committing suicide so his wish could be fulfilled. His apparition has never been seen, but the unexplained sounds of keys jingling throughout the cemetery is believed to be David still keeping a watch over the graves. These are just two of the many reports of ghosts in the cemetery, easily making La Recoleta Cemetery one of the most haunted places in Argentina. Hotel del Salto, Colombia. If you're looking for a building with a creepy appearance, then this is the place and it also comes with its own resident ghosts and legends. The impressive house was built in 1923 as a residential mansion for a well-to-do architect, and it's situated on the edge of a cliff, just opposite Tequindama Falls in Bogota, Colombia. In the late 1920s, it was turned into a luxury hotel for the rich, and with its stunning views of the waterfall, wealthy travelers flocked there. By 1950, plans were in place to convert it into a much larger hotel. However, with the population and industry in the area increasing, 
the Bogata River was becoming increasingly polluted, so much so that it began to give off a terrible odour. Visitor numbers dropped, and construction was halted. By the early 90s, the hotel was finally closed down and left abandoned. Soon nature reclaimed the structure, inside and out, and rumours started circulating that something sinister was happening in and around the building. It was reported the place was riddled with paranormal activity. Its tragic past helped these reports, as over the years, the cliff edge near the house was a notorious suicide spot, and often personal items and notes were found in the area, left by the poor souls who decided to end their lives there. The fact that so many people chose that spot to commit suicide made people believe that the hotel had now been taken over by their spirits. There is a local legend that the indigenous Muisca Indians also used the spot to jump into the falls to avoid capture by Spanish conquerors during the conquest of South America. And as they fell, they would transform into eagles and fly to their freedom. To add one more tale to the mix, the former caretaker of the hotel believes the ghosts are the former patrons of the building who would sometimes end up in bar fights that ended on the second story balcony with the loser often plunging to his death, never to be seen again. Today, you can visit the building after it was converted in 2013 by the Institute of Natural Sciences of the National University of Columbia into a museum as part of their effort to rehabilitate the area. But be aware, there are still those who think the building is cursed and will never escape its tragic past, and it's still believed to be haunted by the spirits of many lost souls. Joelma Building. The Joelma Building in Sao Paulo, Brazil, is very well documented for having paranormal activity, and it's easy to see why with its tragic history. The building was built in 1971 and was a 25 story office block, but just three years after its official opening on February 1, 1974, disaster struck when an air conditioning unit on the 12th floor overheated and caught fire. Because flammable materials had been used to furnish the interior, the entire building was engulfed in flames within 20 minutes. There were 756 people in the building at the time, most of them working for a banking company. 179 people lost their lives, and 300 were injured, and it was the third worst skyscraper fire ever in terms of the death toll after 9-11. People inside ran to the roof in the hopes of being saved. Some were but others leapt to their deaths rather than being burned alive. With only one staircase still accessible, the fire crew resorted to drastic measures, attempting to evacuate people via the elevators. Unfortunately, they were able to save around 300 people using this method. In the years following the disaster, the building was rebuilt and renamed, but visitors and workers in the building claim it's a very unsettling place to be, with an atmosphere of sorrow and anguish. It's thought to be extremely active, with witnesses claiming to have seen spirits roaming the halls and offices. There is also the mystery of the 13 souls. It's alleged that 13 people became trapped in one of the elevators while trying to escape. They all burned alive and were unidentifiable. It's thought they still haunt the building to this day. This is a very sad story and makes me wonder if the building should have been turned into a memorial rather rebuilt due to the sadness it must be filled with. If any of you have ever visited, I would love to hear if you have had any experiences or what the atmosphere was like. North Yungas Road. Now this place is a true horror and is known as Death Road due to its notoriously high death rate. The road was cut into the side of the Cordillera Oriental mountain chain in Bolivia by prisoners during the Chaco War in the 1930s. Whether they deliberately created a death trap is unclear, but over the next 80 years, the notorious road claimed the lives of up to 300 travellers per year. The road is surrounded by mountainous terrain and stretches from the Bolivian capital to the subtropical town of Coraco. At its highest point, it climbs 4,650 metres into cold air before gradually descending to 1,200 metres into the hot, humid town of Coraco. The combination of these two extreme weathers, along with single track roads, 900 meter high cliffs, limited visibility, rock falls, and lack of guardrails, and you can see why so many people have lost their lives there. If the roller coaster route isn't enough to scare even the most experienced driver, then the unsettling number of crosses and memorials 
marking the spots where people have lost their lives is. It's a stark reminder of just how many victims it has claimed. In places, you are literally driving along a cliff edge and one wrong turn or lapse of concentration can be fatal. For many years, the death road was the only link between La Paz and the Yungas region of Bolivia, and it was not unusual for unsuspecting drivers of buses and trucks overloaded with people and supplies to overtake on the three meter hairpin bends, even at night, often resulting in them crashing down the side of the cliffs, taking with them whoever was traveling with them. And one of Bolivia's worst road accidents happened on July the 24th, 1983, when an overcrowded bus veered off the side of the road and into a canyon, killing more than 100 passengers. Despite efforts to modernize the road, up until 1994, there were cars falling over the edge at a rate of one every two weeks, and it became known as the world's most dangerous road. Thankfully, in 2009, construction of an alternative road replacing the death road was completed, with all traffic being diverted to the new route. However, the road is not completely closed, and it's a magnet for daredevil backpackers and mountain bikers who still use the infamous road, but it shows no mercy. To this day, it still claims lives, making it one of the eeriest and most haunted roads in not just South America, but the world. Kiloe. Kiloe is the largest of the Kiloe Islands and is located just off the coast of southern Chile, and for many years has been isolated not only from Chile, but the rest of the world. During that time, it has developed its own unique culture, with tales of terrifying creatures, witchcraft, and ghost ships making it one of the creepiest places in South America. Kiloe Island is a charming place with its colorful houses on stilts dotted along the coast and a scattering of wooden churches. Today, it has a small population made up of indigenous people as well as colonial Spanish and German immigrants. And this mix has led to a curious way of life with many still believing the terrifying legends of past years. The most famous being the mysterious Brujos a coven of male warlocks who live in caves and terrorize the locals for fun. They are said to have inhabited the region since before Spanish rule, but it wasn't until the witch hunts of the 1880s that the grisly details of their practice became known. They are said to have rejected Spanish Catholicism, and in a bizarre ceremony, they debaptized themselves in a waterfall for 40 days before making a pact with the devil. They would then sacrifice someone close to them and use their skin to sew a bag for their spellbook. This book enabled them to shapeshift into animals and cast powerful curses. But even more horrific was the poor creatures who were forced to guard their caves. They were deformed local children known as Imbunche. According to legend, newborn babies were bought or stolen by the Brujos, who then mutilated them to serve their needs. In a horrific practice, they would break their right legs and twist them over their backs so they would walk on two hands and one foot. Later, their tongues were sliced with a knife to appear like a serpent, rendering them completely unable to communicate, aside from a few grunts. The Imbunche were then condemned to spend the rest of their lives watching over the cave, being fed by their masters with raw human flesh stolen from freshly buried corpses. The Brujos also had what were known as La Voladora. These were usually female relatives of a member of the coven who were forced to drink a potion that made them vomit up their internal organs, eventually transforming into a black messenger bird. And to this day, the locals still believe black birds bring bad luck. Another fascinating Kiloa legend is that of a ghost ship that is allegedly manned by a crew of drowned sailors. The ship sails effortlessly through the thick fog and is capable of sailing both above and beneath the water. Despite never being seen, there are plenty of fishermen who swear they have heard the sound of music and chatting through the mist of the ocean in the dead of night. Although the island welcomes visitors, it's easy to see with these gruesome legends why the numbers are low. So that's five of the most haunted and creepy places in South America, just a handful really, considering how many there are. If you have ever been to one of these places, or know any more creepy places in South America, then let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and if you're enjoying all of these creepy videos, head over to our store and pick up an I Believe Beanie to express your belief in the paranormal. I'll see you right back here soon for another creepy video, as part of the Creepy Marathon Month we all love.